I loved what you were saying about Eckhart and how you would approach him with your, um, you know, your reactivity or whatnot, and you would lean on him and he would just kind of walk away <laughs> and leave you being quite frustrated and angry about where you were at and not having the pattern anymore to play in that sort of dynamic. And I recognize that so much myself. So I'm curious um, on two things. One, being in that relationship with someone who was so present and having him kind of step away and leaving you alone with that emotion, how did you ultimately deal with that within yourself with presence? Um, I'm just kind of curious because when I'm in a loop and I want to engage and I'm really upset with my husband or upset with a situation, I tend to want to like lay it on him and let him ruminate with me on it. And, and if he was to walk away and I was stuck with it, I, I know, know exactly how I would overcome that through stillness when my mind is just, you know, reeling. But the second part of that question is, is clearly you've overcome that, like clearly, and I guess I would ask you, have you reached a place where you have mastered that and it doesn't arise for you anymore? Have you, have you gotten to that, that point where there's no longer the interdependence or, or the need to prop yourself back up, which obviously seems to be the goal? So I just thought I would ask you to, a deeper line of questions around what you were telling us earlier. Yes. Okay, let, let me just clarify something. That even two healthy people will sometimes will need to have somebody to lean on. So Eckhart earlier this year was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, he's okay now. It's all gone. So he had to lean on me. So it's, and it's okay, and you accept that leaning. And then when you get healthy again, you kind of come back up. So whether it's physical, uh, emotional, or psychological, it's okay to do that leaning, but then you need to come up. It's only becomes dysfunctional when it's always like this. And um, I took it into my meditation. I watched the thoughts, what kind of thoughts I would have not following them, just watching and observing. So it's an observation of my thoughts, what kind of thoughts I was having when he would walk out, observation of the emotional body that I was feeling inside me, dropping the labels. So I would drop the labels. So say if I was angry and I could feel the anger and I know it's anger, I would just drop the label anger because if you hold on to that label it's almost like the energy of it just stays solidified but if you drop the label and feel where it is in your body then it's just this sensation that you are feeling that we call anger and i would feel it and just be present with it and soon it would dissolve, and then it would more awareness than is there because you are you become a witness to what is going on with you and without judgment. So I didn't judge myself. I didn't judge myself for getting angry. I didn't judge myself for feeling hurt. It was just, oh, okay, I'm left with this. And it Always, you know, it was fine. Usually it took me, you know, maybe the evening, the night, and then the next day we're talking and it's like nothing happened, you know, or we talk about what happened. And you're probably there now where you can just take it in your meditation. There will be times, and I've experienced this, where I don't want to just observe it. I want to be angry. So I'm taking in my meditation, I'm like, oh no, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> sure enough, I'm lost in the anger. I, it's like I become the anger then. But if you can take it into your meditation and have, choose awareness, it doesn't mean that all those emotions leave you immediately, and you'll never feel them again. 
Usually the emotions subside, yes, but you also get some understanding and some learning with it. So do you remember when I talked about that train yesterday? Oh, you weren't here. Okay, you here weren't here. So I used to live in this cute little house with the English garden, and when I rented it, I didn't know there was train tracks right behind me. So I would get angry every time a train went by, and there'd be about three or four of them in a day, and I would be angry for hours. And then I took it into my meditation, I realized, oh my God, I'm still angry, and the train left two hours ago. So as soon as I saw that, so you get that insight, I never got angry again when a train passed, ever. It was just like, oh, train. There was no trigger in me in my body. So if you can take whatever feeling, whatever emotion, thoughts that you have, and just be present with it, you'll gain some insight into it. And when you gain the insight into it, it won't come up again. Or it may come, I don't want to say it won't come up again, because it may, life has a funny way of testing us. And think that, like, I remember when I didn't have a pain body attack for a whole year. And I said to myself, oh my God, I think I'm rid of the pain body. I haven't had a pain body attack for a whole year. I swear, as soon as I said that, had that thought, something triggered me and I had a pain body attack. So life comes around and says, yeah, you think you don't have a pain body anymore? How about this one? So it's like, it's a thought. In the moment, I mean... Oftentimes, people say, oh, I don't want to have a pain body attack. I never want to have another pain body attack again. Well, you can bet you're going to have a pain body attack. We don't know what life is going to, what experiences are going to happen to present itself. It's just this moment. We can't see into the future. So we just go, all right, I don't have a pain body right now. And that's that's sufficient. It's enough. Because as long as you can be in the present moment, it's not a problem. Even the pain body isn't a problem if you can be in the present moment with it and truly just observe it, watch it, feel it. Because oftentimes the pain body is old emotional wounds that we haven't felt and we weren't ready to feel when we were younger but you're ready now. And many people, I've had many people come up to me and said, you know, it seems like my pain body is getting worse. The attacks are getting worse. And I'll say, congratulations. And they're like, what? I go, no, it's not getting worse. It was always like this, but you weren't aware of it. So if you see, it seems like your pain body is getting worse, it's just your awareness is growing and you're aware of your pain body. So it's, it is, I'm not saying it's easy, it is challenging, but it can be done. And you're doing it. Just the fact that you're here and you're looking at it. Just the fact that you heard and it, the story I'm telling you and you see it in yourself. It's a reflection. All this is a reflection. Even the person that who is perhaps, you know, that has a pain body that's trying to trigger your pain body is a reflection of who you, what you are, what you're feeling inside. So with that woman doing the Pilates, it's the same thing. When somebody comes to her and it triggers her own pain body, it's reflecting. It's not a bad thing. It's like we got to then begin to welcome it so that we can transcend it. If we resist it, it's going to persist. It'll keep on being there until we go, ah, okay, I'll welcome this too, and just look at it without any judgment. Feel it without any judgment. Feel it without any resistance. 
That's interesting. I um, realize as I'm talking to you that so much of the like anger cycles or patterns just they start with fear. Mm-hmm. Whether I'm like driving in the car with him and he hits the brakes really hard and like scares me and then I slip into it. But just that moment of awareness to go, okay, wait, I'm doing this again. It scared me. Breathe and feel it. I don't need to respond with anger or, you know, the news or the things outside of us that are so frightening, it seems like. And he'll come home and I want to talk about it because I'm just really afraid mm-hmm. um, to learn or teach myself how to sit with that in a, and not constantly tip over and need that support for him to help talk me through something that's scary, but rather, I guess, if I'm hearing you, you know, just notice, just recognize that that is a, f- an, a feeling or an emotion and I don't need to project it. I can just be aware of it and it'll subside is what you're saying. So. Yeah, yeah, and you don't have the expectation that your husband is going to fix it, you know, because oftentimes they don't, they have their own conditioning, the male conditioning. Emotions? Well, don't need that. I don't know, they're gifted some way or somehow they learn that they don't have, but they do have it. You know, and women, they they want that support from their male because we have that you know, that conditioning that the male is somehow our shining prince and it's going to take away everything. But that's just a story. It's just the illusion, all the things, all the things, all the ways that we see that we think the world how it ought to be. It's nothing like that. Mm -hmm.